So, <coughs> Lady Killer, which became prime suspect, was about the emerging British serial killer John David. Guys Cannon. Guys Cannon. You corresponded with him and obtained some evidence which convinced the Met Police that Cannon murdered a London real estate agent, Susie Lamplew. Multiple rapist and robber Cannon also murdered Shirley Banks in Bristol. So he he revealed all this to you? Yeah, I I, I did the, as your listeners will remember that, I used certain fishing techniques. And when John was arrested and he was in prison, or well, he was tried in prison in Bristol, I think it was, Everybody wanted his book, and I wrote to him, and he just said to me, um, he's a very intelligent, articulate, good writer, and he wrote back rather snobbly and saying, well, I'm sorry, but I've got so many people wanting to write my book, I can't be bothered with you at the moment. So what I did was I thought, oh, yeah, okay. I just sent him half a dozen book covers, different book covers, and and, and, and also I got John Blake to uh, invent a phony, um, a phony commissioning note, which I put a copy in. And I said, well, look, this is who I am. Um, I'm going to write the book anyway. This is my credentials. Uh, if you, I'd like you to cooperate with me. If you don't want to, I'll go and write without you. And, and he came and he said, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> Over two years, he corresponded with me. In lengthy correspondence, he made a lot of admissions, which he hadn't. He denied Susie Lamplew completely. He denied Sandra Court in Bournemouth. He denied Shirley Banks in Bristol. He made a lot of admissions, and to be a, 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 even a psychopath, you've got to have a good memory, because what you say one month, you might forget you say something the next month. That's why a lengthy correspondence with these people can be very, very vital. Uh, eventually, obviously, um, you know, all came out about Susie Lamplew. I went down to Bristol, I spoke to DCI Brian Saunders. I got all the exhibits out and looked at stuff. And I sat with Brian Saunders, who's now in Thailand. He's retired now. He was the chief investigator. And he he, he was going like this. He was sort of going, SLP, no, SLP, what was it? 64, whatever it was, three. And he said, I've been looking at the star signs, Christopher, trying to figure out what all this is out. I said, I looked at him and I said, hey, just a minute, Susie Lamplew, third victim, 19, whatever it was. You're kidding me. I said, that's on his bloody car. He was sticking two fingers up at the police. This taunting. Um, very briefly then, I found in the bag of rub and bag of exhibits, a, uh, it was a torn up pay and display ticket for Paul Mayday Bank Holiday weekend of that following year, I think 86, whatever it was. I looked at it, I opened it up. I thought, Paul, what's, it, what's that doing in his boot of his car, this piece of paper? Sandra Court was murdered that night, only a mile away from where he was. The body was found in a ditch, the same as the other girls, uh, as Shirley Banks. John had denied ever being in Bournemouth that day. I said, but you can hang on a minute. And then he told me, but previously he told me all about the New Forest, how he drove around all the back roads, and that's where all of her Sandra's possessions were found. Mm. Anyway... <coughs> Excuse me, where the police became interested, and they asked me to come up to Buckingham Palace Road Police Station because I had all these letters. John had read my book, Lady Killer. He'd flipped. He said it was a pack of lies. So I told him, I said, I've got his letters. What more do you want? So we went up there, sat down, and it came down to how did John Canan dispose of Shirley Banks' uh, Susie Lampley's body? Her car was found by the Thames. How did he get rid of the body? He must have had another car. So I said to DC, uh, Stuart Alt and Jim Dickey, I said, look, he, had, he was using, when he was up there, he was on day release from a prison hostel wearing with scrubs. I said he was driving a hostel cook's Ford Red Sierra car. Bingo. Now they've got to find this Red Sierra. The Met went through every scrapyard in London and they found the car. And in the car, they found John Canan's DNA and Shirley Bank, uh, um, and Susie Lampley's DNA. The CPS, the Can't Prosecute Service, 
turn around and said, well, what does that prove? That proves that she's been in the car and he, but they could have been on different occasions and they refused to prosecute. <gasps> the police, right? And and then DCI Dickey, uh, uh, Stuart Holt, went on television on a, on a broadcast and then they were furious that they couldn't do it. So they then came to me and said, look, Chris, look, we're going to arrest Canaan and he's in Wakefield Prison and we're going to bring him back to Buckingham Palace Road Police Station. I'm going to interview him. Can you give us a few tips on interview techniques? I said, look, I've got the only copies left now of the interviews that Brian Saunders had with Canaan on the Shirley Banks. I've got all the folders because they destroyed theirs. I've got them from his brief. And the upshot was Brian Saunders called it a game of mongoose in the snake. They interviewed Canaan and then he kept his mouth shut. And that's where a body is, nobody knows. I was in Manila a few years ago and they dug up his mother's garden looking for it. It was all in the papers. When I was out there, I was getting the press on to me all the time. Can you come back? We want to talk to you about this, blah, blah, blah. I said, it's impossible that he's put the body under his mother's patio or his garage because he went home that night. The night he killed Susie Lamplew, he drove straight back to Sutton Coalfield. His mother helped him pay suitcases out of his car, right? Put him in, gave him a dinner, and she said, uh, and, and this is Johnny's room, she said he never went in the garage, and yet the police are spending a week digging it up again. Now, Last couple of questions then. Um, in many of your books, you talk about the mask of normality. What does that mean? As we touched on earlier, this camouflage that these, these killers wear. Okay, final question. Who is Lenny the Lizard? Lenny the Lizard was actually one of the ins one of the creatures I saw in the Manila Ocean Park. Ah. That's where the first chapter of the book is Lenny the Lizard. Gotcha. Because it's a little bit of humour, but that's where it first triggered off the idea for the book, The Mask of Normality, it wearing a camouflage. How many books have you written? Well, I think it's 36. Last count. 30, 36 or 37, but they've been translated into a score of different languages, even Russian now. So, Grief. and Japanese, I think.